It's about ooh, 7 a.m. Slept like an absolute log. Yesterday was pretty intensive. I think it was just the whole adrenaline thing of where we're going to get home, where we're not going to get home. But, you know, 7 a.m. The reason it's, I'm up at 7 is I was just kind of like I half woke up and then got so excited that I was back on the boat that I was like, okay, I'm going to get up. So, yeah, so we're back. The boat all seems to be, you know, everything's fine. You know, all the electrics are working. Smite problem with a joker valve on the Jabsco toilet, but, you know, me and my continual fight with Jabsco products. We are going to go and take the bikes, go and do some shopping. And genuinely, I feel so happy that I'm back. 12 weeks of kind of almost complete confinement. I think I've been out with the exception of going shopping once a week for my parents. I think I've been out two or three times in three months and you know for the last five years I've lived a free life it's kind of like a bit like the caged bird that kind of is let out anyway I am literally euphoric Alright, so the first thing we are going to do is go out and do some grocery shopping. We're going to do quite a big kind of provisioning trip because um, we don't want to be going to the supermarket all the time. So we're going to take our bikes and um, hopefully uh, fill out the baskets. Do we have a backpack? No. Yeah, backpacks. One backpack in there. Okay. And then there's two backpacks. Yeah, we'll fill them all up and then hopefully that'll keep us going for, you know, a week or so. I think, yeah, we need to buy a week's worth of food. Yeah. I think that's, that's socially appropriate. That's socially responsible. Well, we don't want to be going to the supermarket all the time because, you know, we're very, very, very isolated on the boat. But obviously going to the supermarket is um, the point where we can be in contact with other people. Oh God, it's so warm. I think maybe Blackpool is a bad choice, but <laughs> God, it's so nice. <laughs> What an absolutely stunning day for a cycle. And it smells like the sea and it's just like so warm and sunny. And after I think 10 weeks of self-isolation in London, it feels really good to be back out and about, enjoying the fresh air, enjoying the sea air. And uh, quite frankly, it feels really good just to kind of have a little bit of freedom back. And normality. A little bit of freedom and normality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This feels very normal to us. This is exactly what we would do anyway. You guys recognize this place? This was Belle de Gabu, our favorite watering hole from last year, and it is um, completely non existent now. It's meant to reopen in April, and obviously that never happened, and I don't know when or if that is going to happen. The time is always right to open up your eyes and be the flickering flame. I know that this is a bit gross, but it's actually nice to feel myself sweating a bit. You know, being stuck in uh, in London, anything that makes me sweat is the fact that my mother has to have the house temperature at about 90 Fahrenheit. Sunlight on your skin is just a beautiful, beautiful thing. And uh, yeah, I imagine that probably uh, probably a certain number of minutes into this episode and you're getting sick of hearing me bang on with my superlatives about how happy I am. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> But yeah, dose of vitamin D, a dose of French air and um, a lovely day. Our first of freedom in three months. So I guess now is as good a time as any to tell you what is and isn't allowed um, here in France. So 
you don't have to wear masks and you can go out and about kind of however you like. Um, but if you are inside, particularly if you're on a train or public transport, you do need to wear a mask. There are signs, if you go into like a supermarket or something saying, please wear a mask. Don't actually know if that's mandatory or just like highly recommended, but anyway. And um, bars and restaurants and cafes aren't open yet, but shops are, so supermarkets are, and I believe like little shops can open. Um, you can, we can go sailing if we want to, but we have to stick within 100 kilometers, which is I think about 54 miles of La Rochelle, because that's our home port at the moment. Other than that, as I said before, life is gonna go along as per kind of normal for us for a little while. The most important thing on my shopping list. <laughs> Right, so I've put all the groceries away and um, we're about to sit down and have a little bit of lunch. Um, but yeah, the, the task ahead of us over the next, probably at least the next few days, if not the next week or two, is um, to get this boat ready to set sail again. And that is not going to be a small task. I have realized that um, the, there is more mold on this boat than I've seen before. The winter obviously has been very damp. Um, and so, yeah, just cleaning out the cupboards and everything is going to require me to take everything out, clean everything, put everything back. Um, the outside of the boat obviously has been exposed to the elements all winter, so we need to um, obviously clean everything outside. And then uh, there's going to be a lot of work just getting the boat otherwise set up for sailing. Um, so that's going to be, there's quite a bit to do. So Nick, what, uh, what have you got on? It's little things, it's the maintenance jobs. So first thing, just in no particular order, I'm going to replace the cable from the helm microphone um, for the VHF. Garmin were very kind to send me a replacement cable because the UV light damaged the, uh, the, the adapter. I so feel I've like got... that cable has been an issue. It well. has, and the Garmin modified the design a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And when I phoned them and said, look, I've got a problem with the cable, they, they were very good. They said, oh, we'll just send you a new one for free. Mm -hmm. In fact, they sent me a whole new microphone unit for free. Um, so that's good. So the helm mic, uh, the command mic for the VHF, I've got to change a drawer front. One of the drawers got a scratch on it because some uh, guest of ours who remained nameless, Matt Hill, um, <laughs> put um, a hold or pulled a hold all out and put a big scratch on the drawer front so I went to buy that. Number three, I've got to change the computer um, panel for the keel control at the helm that uh, that was um, playing up so I ordered a completely new one um, at some ridiculous expense because it's a custom part so that's got to be fitted. Um, I've got to put the anemometer uh, on the top of the mast because the little cups blew off in a gale so we've got new cups um, then climb the mast do a full rig inspection while I'm up there and dive under the hull scrape the hull then go through and do all the checks and then put the sails on and then go sailing I reckon if we work eight hours a day every day we've got a week's work to do and before anyone Anyone gives me grief about using a jet wash on teak. I'm not. <laughs> what are you doing then? Well, basically, when it comes to teak, the cleaning teak, you are not meant to use like, fresh, like any sort of pressure on it. Like you can't yeah. use jet wash. It takes the pulp out of the teak. What you can do is, and my rule of thumb with all this sort of thing, is um, if you can stand it on your foot and it feels like a tickle. Oh. If there's like a tickle on your foot, you can use it. You, you'll be okay, you'll be okay with a jet wash. So although I do use a jet wash on the teak, it is from a distance that means that it does not it does not uh, damage the teak.
just seems like a normal early summer's day. Loads of boats going out. This feels very, very normal. Beautiful day for a sail. I wish we could go out and join them. But for the moment, I am more than happy just to be on the boat. Even if we're in a marina, I do not mind. Just being back on board is more than enough. Despite the fact that the boat is quite dirty and needs a lot of work, particularly a lot of cleaning, but we're getting there. Now, what do you think the chances are of Nick having gotten quite a bit of water through the hatches into the inside of the boat? I think the chances are quite high. Let's go see. Now, I would never suggest that you would have gotten any water inside the boat, but I'm going to go and see right now. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, he did. Yeah. Told ya. Told ya. Our fruit bowl is wet. Yep. I knew it. I knew it. Oh well. It's just water. I can clean it up. Baby, look what that was not So just be aware that I'm filming myself in the galley. So don't go and stand right in front of it. You need to go over there. Is that okay? Yeah. Hello. How are you doing? Are you still... Okay, hey, how... I... What did I say? I don't know, Donna. I, I said to you, I'm filming with the Cosmo. Don't walk in front of it. I literally just said that to you five minutes ago. So I think one of the reasons why the boat is so dirty and there's like such a mold issue is that although we haven't been here all winter, which is kind of slightly probably problematic because the boat's been in the water all winter and that couldn't have helped. I think the main problem is that Nick uh, was here, what, I guess like 12, 13 weeks ago and he didn't like properly shut down the boat. He didn't like go through all the cupboards and clean everything out. He didn't spray stuff with vinegar because he thought that he would be back within a couple of weeks. Um, and he left in a bit of a rush as well because like, as everyone remembers, I think this would have been first, probably the second week of March and everything was like really ramping up and changing every day. He wasn't planning to leave the boat at all. And then one minute, you know, he's planning for me to fly out and be with him within the week. And then the next minute he is on a train on the Eurostar back to London. Um, so I think that he just didn't have, have the time to clean everything and make sure everything was like kind of winterized I guess um, although of course he did like the basics but yeah but that's okay we're cleaning it all up and this boat is going to be as good as new by the time we set off and I'm very excited about having a really lovely clean boat um, to, to start sailing in so yeah better get back to it Wow. What's going on in there? There's a stainless steel barbecue, so theoretically it should be fine. Our barbecue is like almost completely corroded through after being stuck in the locker for I think, well, at least a year. When was the last time we used it? Nick reckons we used it in the canals. Yeah, I think he's right actually. In fact, I remember it very clearly now that I something think about it. Yeah, and the smoke went all like across the canal and it looked really beautiful actually. Um, but yeah, a winter on the water has not done that barbecue any favours whatsoever and like literally it is, well, it, it, well, you can see it for yourself actually. So the next plan is to jet wash it after applying a liberal amount of degreaser and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be having a barbecue for dinner in an hour or so. I don't know what the chances of that are. So what I found um, really striking today, particularly this evening as I sit in the cockpit and just kind of watch the world go by, is how normal everything seems. Everything seems totally normal. Not a new normal, not a different kind of normal, but just normal normal. There are, there is a continuous kind of display of boats going by, all almost all packed with people. Like the one just there has 
five people on board. To be fair, they're probably a family. So there's been plenty that I've seen out that have just groups of friends, I guess, on board. You know, right next to us is a Nil 45. Um, the cockpit is full of people just having an evening drink. Um, you know, next door is some kind of instructor with a couple of people who are clearly learning. Um, yeah, people are going out for the day, coming back into the marina for the evening. Just here in this marina, it's different when you go into town. You notice that things aren't normal, but here in this marina, things just seem totally normal. And that is a little jarring, actually, <laughs> after everything that's been happening over the last few months and, you know, obviously will continue to happen. But um, for now, it's refreshing and it's lovely and, you know, it just... I don't know, those months of self-isolation in London feel very far away. But for now, we, uh, I think it's time for our beer. Is it time for our beer yet? Yeah. I think we have earned it. Our first um, 24 hours back on board. It's a good feeling. Well, cheers to our first 24 hours back on the boat. Exactly, 22 so far, but yes, our first day. Yeah, our first day. This is like our standard salad, I think, in France. It's beetroot, goat's cheese and then just some lettuce and tomatoes or whatever. We've also got some avocados, but I don't think that they're ripe. Although, to be fair, I can never tell. That doesn't feel ripe to me. Yeah. Nah. 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 <laughs> okay. Um, so now dressing, how far away are the sausages, Nick? Five to 10. Five to 10. Okay, so I'll make a salad, uh, uh, I'll make a dressing. Oi! <laughs> so, you know, we've got the barbecue working again. Uh, this is actually the, the marina we've stayed in, that we've been, we've visited the most times. I know, I feel like it's, it's actually also the marina we've spent the most time in now. Yeah. I feel like this marina just sucks us in and just won't let go. I love it here though. As I said to you this morning, you know, because we haven't sailed for so long and because of like COVID-19, this kind of like rekindles the kind of heady, heady joy of being some, doing something different that we found the first time here. Now, once you've sailed off around the bloody world and spent a month in the French canals, you know, you know, with a mast on deck after making an A-frame, it's a little bit like meh, you know, La Rochelle, but now, you know, Three weeks in my mother's attic. Three weeks? Why three months? Sorry, three months in my mother's three attic. Weeks, yeah, apparently. absolutely. This is like joy to the world. My best friend. Today, um, Nick is going up the mast. I don't really hate these jobs. Which I think it's fair to say is his least favourite job on the boat. Now I'm going downstairs to start yelling at stuff. Yeah. Both our cameras cut out <laughs> halfway through that situation. Maybe almighty bollocks of this at this end. And it wasn't pretty. And frankly, the less you saw of that, probably the better. <sighs> Either you are like really incompetent, which I know that you're not, or I just did it wrong. <laughs> 